How's it going, everybody? Happy Saturday. We're going to get right into the action. G-Man Choi, Joe Adele both injured themselves in their games today. JBJ made his debut with the Milwaukee Brewers. So we're going to get right into things. But one announcement before we go. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to go live for our live stream. Going to have a lot of good things to talk about, and I can't wait to see you all there. So please, make sure you put it on your calendars Put a notification in your phone, whatever you got to do, and just come in and join us at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That is 10 a.m. Pacific Time for those of you on the West Coast, and I hope to see you all, all there. Welcome back to the Daily Baseball Report. Coach Matt coming at you with another video where all we do is talk all things baseball, baseball news, and coverage of the major leagues. If you like that kind of content, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So just to get my hat reference out of the way right away, this hat is Menlo College. They have a really good baseball program there. It's a NAIA level school. They're a very fun place to go. It's I think the school is like 90% athletes. There's maybe 350 people at the school. It's located in Atherton, California. So for those of you out there who are looking for a school to go, it's a good school to go to. It's a little bit on the pricey side, just so you all know, but it's a great place to go and a great place to uh, play some college baseball. You get good training there. I was a strength conditioning coach there when I was there. I loved it. It was a great time and it helped me push into returning myself into the baseball world. Kyle Freeland had a really good start today for the Colorado Rockies. I feel like he is their best pitcher. There's another, there's a video by Foolish Baseball. I'll link it in the description below. Go check it out. He talks about Colorado quite possibly being the worst franchise of all time. It's really good. And he talks about Kyle Freeland and how he's actually pretty successful. Him and Herman Marquez are pretty successful in Colorado and why. He has stats on it. It's really cool. So check out that video. I'll link it below. Anyways, today... He had four innings, he gave up three hits, he had four Ks, and his spring training ERA is still 0.0. Pretty great. Greg Bird hit a home run for the Rockies, and Trevor Story hit a double for the Rockies. Moving over to the D-backs and the Padres. If you haven't seen this clip of Tatis yet, take a look at this. So, Tatis hits the ball, it hits off the pitcher, and he gets to first base. And then the very next batter, Jake Cronenworth, does the same thing. Hits the ball. It hits off the pitcher. Deflects off the pitcher. Goes toward first base. Cronenworth gets out. But Tatis, in his, with Tatis being extremely heads up, not only did he, does he advance to second base, but then he sees no one covering third, and he runs all the way to third base, and he's safe at third. Just a really awesome heads up play by Tatis. The next hitter is Machado. And he hits a, a pretty high, soft liner into the shallow left field area. And the shortstop catches the ball kind of on his back feet like this, falling back and, and caught the ball. And then Tatis takes advantage of that and he sprints home and he scores on the ball. What a heads up play. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's a, spe that's a special play by a special player. And on the other side of the ball, Ketel Marte hit a home run for the Diamondbacks. And not only does Ketel Marte hit a blast, but he also pimps it as he's running, rounding second base near Tatis. I thought I, I thought that was awesome. Let's have let's have a little uh, let's have a little bet. Who do you think is gonna have a better season, Ketel Marte or Fernando Tatis? Comment below. I want to see what you guys think. Shohei Otani made another start today, and he didn't do all that great, but he did show some pretty incredible abilities in some of his pitches. I think he's working through some things, which is why he was hit. But he made a couple of hitters look like they've never seen a ball thrown ever. It's just incredible pitches. Yet, he still gave up four runs. He pitched 2.1 innings, gave up six hits. He gave up five runs. They were all earned. He had one walk, he had four Ks, and his ERA currently is 13.5. So I'm sure there's some things he's working through, but he, he did make some pitches that were pretty awesome. Good good break, good spin. He had good control. He was definitely fooling some hitters, but obviously, as you can see by the stat line, he didn't fool all of them. For example, Tim Anderson had a double, and Luis Robert had a home run off of him. So these guys definitely had uh, their way with him, and he didn't fool those two hitters, that's for sure. Joe Adele also 
looks like he injured himself on this fly ball to left center gap, hits the fence, kind of like rolls his wrist into the fence as he goes after the ball. Hopefully he's not too injured and that he can get back to the field fairly soon. Moving over to the Cleveland Indians and San Francisco Giants, Zach Plesak had the worst start of his spring so far. He pitched 2.1 innings, gave up six hits, four runs, they were all earned. He had two walks and four Ks, and his ERA is now over eight. Zach Plesak is not living up to expectation. On the other side of the ball, Logan Webb actually did very good. He pitched three innings, had one hit, one walk, six Ks, and his ERA is zero. Austin Slater of the San Francisco Giants hit a three-run home run to power the offense to lead the Giants past the Indians. And Nick Prado of the Kansas City Royals had Two home runs. This is a Huntington Beach native, super young guy, 22 years old. He had a two home run game today. Both home runs were no doubters, as well as Jorge Soler. He had his third home run of the spring to lead the Royals past the Chicago Cubs. Moving over to the Toronto Blue Jay game. It actually should have been called the Kevin Biggio game because he did everything. Kevin was two for three with three runs and Three RBIs and a walk. Robbie Ray pitched in that game. He pitched four innings, gave up four hits, two walks, and he had three Ks, and his ERA is down to 2.16. Ian Anderson is pitching for the Braves against the Boston Red Sox, and he did not do very well. He pitched 3.1 innings. He gave up four hits, three runs. They were all earned, and he had seven Ks. So he's got the stuff, but he just, for whatever reason, they, he was hittable that day. Michael Geddes hits a grand slam to help lead the Red Sox past the Braves. This ball was a blast, by the way. And moving over to the New York Yankees, DJ LeMahieu and Aaron Hicks both had two hits. LeMahieu scored two runs, had three RBIs. He is now hitting 400 with a .979 OPS. Kluber pitched four innings. He had four hits. He gave up two runs. They were both earned. He had two Ks. His ERA is now three. And Aroldis Chapman, he pitched one inning, had one K, his ERA is still at zero. And Ryan Lamar hit a home run for the Yankees. Does anyone get the feeling that every time you read the name Lamar, you think of Headley Lamar? Thank you, thank you, Hedy, thank you. It's not Hedy, it's Headley, Headley Lamar. Dang. Anyone know the reference? If you know the reference, comment below. Zach Eflin and Casey Mize duped it out today for the Phillies and the Tigers. Zach Eflin sort of won out, pitched four innings, gave up two hits, four Ks, his ERA is zero. Casey Mize pitched 2.1 innings, he gave up four hits, six runs, he has three Ks, and his ERA is over eight. Bryce Harper hit a blast this game. He went two for three with two runs, two RBIs. He is currently hitting 308 with an on-base percentage of 1.207. Didi Gregorius hit a grand slam for the Phillies, and I wonder if this is going to break him out of his... I guess Funk, he's uh, currently hitting like uh, under 200. So uh, maybe this is the, the swing that will help bring him some confidence and get him out of under the, the quote unquote Mendoza line. And Andrew McCutcheon also had two hits and two runs scored. And as I said, G-Man Choi is injured. They say he's gonna be out, out about seven to 10 days. He's got right knee inflammation. They wanna see the inflammation go down. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Barry Bonds. He was always having those knee issues and they would always have to drain his knee, I think every month they had to drain his knee. So hopefully he gets back on the field soon. And uh, to follow that up, Randy Arozarena had a really nice sliding catch. And you all know that I'm a big defense guy. So here's a good clip of Randy making a good catch. All right, well, that does it for today's coverage of the major leagues. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm gonna go live for my first ever live stream. Please come join us for that. It'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait to host it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like baseball, this is the greatest channel to be on. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. We post every single day because I wanna bring you the best and most updated coverage so every day I'm going to cover the major leagues to see what happens, injuries, insights, etc. And then please hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. That's all I ask from you guys. I uh, want to check some things out down in the description box below. I'm going to link a few things. Just go check them out. It'll be a lot. It'll be really great. So please check those out. And without further ado, I will see you tomorrow for the live stream.